I like I like all this crap that we're doing. But anyway, yeah. Hi, Dan. Hi, Chris. Another another moment here to dive into Unreal. I've been sitting at the edge of my seat. What are we What are we talking about right now? <laughs> <laughs> so today we are going to cover a material parameter collection. Sound exciting? Oh yeah, especially if it's building off what we just did. That makes it exciting. So <laughs> let's dig in and we'll just talk about why this is useful. Yeah, so wait, before we get going, don't forget all the YouTube things. Um, helps us make more content. We're trying to do that and contribute and also get better at what we do and network and fill in the blank, all the fun things. Um, and become celebrities. Some No, actually, I don't have any desire to become a celebrity. <laughs> uh oh yeah and check out our patreon we're trying to build that out as well make um more useful information project files uh time lapses etc dan jump 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 off the bridge into unreal <laughs> yeah. okay so we're gonna build off of the last video so we're gonna kind of work off the material that we made in a light reel but today we're gonna cover material parameter collections so if you want to see anything about the last video we will put a link up to that you can move to that one and we'll show you why this is useful so i'm in this scene as you can see we've got our doodads again which are all sorts of fun and they're nice and chrome and i've got this material that's set up and I'll just show you guys really quickly what this is. So simple material, our UVs, our emission. We're going to make this line scroll. The downside about this is every single time I want to animate this in sequencer, I have to access this individually. And you think it doesn't sound like a big deal. But when I open up sequencer and say I want all of these things to animate together, it's a bit of a pain. So if I animate this guy and bring it in, and now I have to go through and pull down the static mesh component. And then I have to go through and pick the element and then pick the emissive offset. And now I finally have access to that parameter that I want to animate. What a pain when you want to do a bunch of these. Ugh. We don't like pains. I know. Yeah, I feel like you're leading me along because I was so excited. This is what you just told me to do, Dan. I showed you how it can work. Now it's time to do better. So what we're going to use is a material parameter collection, and it's pretty simple, and we're going to build off of what we had. So dig in. I'm going to right-click. We're going to go down into materials, and you guessed it, material parameter collection. And we're just going to call this MPC um, reveal. Why not? <clears throat> and you can build these out however you want. You can make these span off of multiple materials. If you wanted to and you did a bunch of animations with materials in a project, you could use this as a master controller. So the reference I would give is it's almost like making um, custom sliders in After Effects that you use to control things. That's kind of how I use this. So we're going to dig in here. Uh, Anamize this because that's just kind of massive. So what I want to control today is I want to be able to access the emission off color the emission on color, and then also we are animating this offset V parameter. So since I don't want to access this every time, these are the three ones we're going to do. So scalar parameters, these are just single values. So zero to one, we're going to make one of these. <clears throat> Twirl this guy down, and we're going to call this offset V. It's pretty straightforward. And vector parameters. So a vector three, it's kind of from the game world. Uh, you see this all the time in Cinema 4D. Um, and I'll just show you just as a nice little reference. But a vector three is basically RGB. So we use this a lot as color. So one is R, two is G, B is three, pretty straightforward. But really, they're just points of data that point in a direction in space. So in cinema, you see this all the time with this. So Z, R, and you know Y is up as G. Um, Directions are a little different on real, but that's what a vector three is in case if anyone's interested. So you make a vector parameter. It's basically RGB, but there's other stuff you can do with it. We just won't get into it today. So I'm going to set this default value to, well, let's, we'll just call this emission off. I'm going to leave this as black because that's what I want it to be, but we can change it later if we want. And I'm going to make one more. So let's rename this emission on straightforward and let's make it red nice and bright you know what no it's gonna be blue because that matters i guess so I save that. this out I, I did that for you 
<laughs> so, all right, we're back in our main material. Let's just make this a little bit bigger. So now what we want to do is replace these values with our material parameter collection. Great. So open the content drawer. And since that's not right where I want it, we'll just minimize. So I'm going to grab this. We're going to drop this guy in here. And right now it says none because I have not specified this to be anything. But we're going to go to the first one. You guessed it, emission off. So under parameter name, emission off. And we're just going to swap this guy out. Delete. And it's giving me an error because this is technically a float four. So this has RGB and A. There's four values. And this one's only giving three. So I ran into this error initially. That's why I did it twice, because I could have just left emission off as, as its own. But we're going to set this to on. And this is going to solve our error, because now 4 matches 4. Easy math. Those are lined up. So now we've got this loaded up in here. And we're going to do one more. So we're going to copy and just duplicate this over here. And now we're going to switch this to offset V. So now let's swap that out. Clean this guy up, save it out. So now we're using our material parameter collection, which we can expand on later if we wanted to, in place of these single values. So how does this actually work into sequencers? So let's see, I'm going to, I have my material. I'm gonna right click, make a material instance, material instance reveal, and I'll do these three just for the sake of showing. So I showed you guys in the beginning how we have to access each individual piece. And like I said, if you have a hundred things in here, it's just not really feasible. It's really tedious. And then if you have to change anything, it's a pain. So under tracks here, I'm going to go to material parameter collection and MPC reveal is the one we just made. So now when I pull this in and I want to access parameters, everything that I've popped in here is now an option. So we're going to do offset V. And the great thing is, is this is now plugged into all of these materials. So basically, if you want to control a bunch of things at once and you don't want to animate them over and over and over in sequencer, you can do it this way. And if you wanted to make a bunch of extra parameters and add them to separate materials and just do like five different materials and you have one collection that controls them all, as long as you organize, this will save you a ton of time. And yeah, like I said, you can still do it the old way if you want to do have individual control, but this is just a great way to streamline this stuff. And it's pretty simple. And that's it. Yeah, seems awesome. seems it's a little over my head, Dan. It's like, what uh, do you have? Well, for me, I guess it, I compare it to my initial thought is, does it all compare to like, oh man, this is so lame, but like pre comping something in After Effects. Um, and so you do, like, I feel like that's all built into this NPC reveal thing. So, kind of. Um, the way I see it is pre comping stuff. I want to get into later with um, animation subsequences, and we can cover that in sequencer, but you can start nesting things, and that's more like pre comping. This is more like making slider controls. So I don't know if you've ever dealt with that much, but I'll make like a right. null and I'll add a bunch of sliders to it, and then I'll just link those up throughout an entire project through expressions. So I'll have one master thing and I can control like a hundred things right. throughout a bunch of pre comps that way. And that way you don't have to keep digging in and out, in and out with expressions. Yeah. Um, in after effects. Yeah. Or, um, what do they call it in cinema user data with the express espresso in cinema? Yeah. A lot of that would be like, if, if you had espresso spanning a bunch of different objects, if you had like one null with an espresso tag, and you brought in stuff from all over the project and you're controlling them on your own user data, same kind of deal there. Mm -hmm. Great. Seems like the foundation of a lot of potential here. Yeah, there's cool. it, it, the, Material animation is such a deep dive. There's so much you can dig into, but just some of these little things, especially if you're keyframing by hand, uh, it just gets to be obnoxious after a while when there's just hundreds of keyframes. Well, cool. Thanks. Um, yeah. Until next time, uh, don't forget like, subscribe, comment below uh, questions. Uh, we're trying to stay on that and uh, make sure we're touching on the, the things and continuing dialogue for others to, you know, grow and, 
uh, get their questions answered as well. Until next time.